CataractCoach.com. Rescuing that Argentinian flag sign. How would you recover from this run-out capsular tear? Watch carefully. Here we go. And look where the Rex's edge is, and boom, out it goes. Now what do you do? It's already out to the Zionlord attachment points, all the way out to the lens equator. Now what? Micro scissors. So a little cut there. All righty, and continue this. Now you've got that one area of weakness. Do you enlarge even more on the rexus? Well, I like this idea of let's decompress a little bit, rock that nucleus, get it rotated a bit. But the question is, what do you do with that big flap there now? Do you create extra points of radialization, like a can opener style, so that you have a more forgiving uh, tissue? Because right now, if you just have that one area in the bottom left of your screen, what's going to happen? Well, as you do some nucleus removal and you work within the bag, let's say, you could push down on the bag and cause that to rip around to the posterior capsule. But if you have multiple one of those, that's the idea behind the old can opener capsulotomy technique from long ago. You'd be able to spread that around to all the areas and you wouldn't have much, as much of a risk. But let's take a look. Going in with the FACO probe, just aspirating, aspirating. Oh, that's an IA probe. IA probe, just to aspirate, get out that liquefied lens material. So that's a good move. So in a case like this, maybe a double rexus technique would have worked a little bit uh, uh, better so you didn't have that as much of a risk for run out, but it can still happen. And so now chopper going inside, and let's see what we're going to do here. Chopper is going to, okay, rotate it a little bit. Maybe are you going to bring it up? Not sure exactly just yet. More viscoelastic, always a good thing. And let's see what we're going to do here with the technique. So... Again, video sped up. We just want to get the whole thing done in five minutes, as is our favorite way of watching videos. So let's see. It's kind of a mystery to me at this point. What would you do? Well, what I'd do, I'd want to enlarge the rexus a little bit more and then bring the nucleus up out of the bag. I don't want to operate in the bag too much because I'm worried that... There you go. I like it. Nucleus up out of the bag. Yeah, I don't want to operate in the bag as much because I know any pressure on the bag as I'm trying to like crack the nucleus into halves or something can propagate that rip all the way posterior. So I do like the technique here. And now just using a forcep. Look at that forcep and a chopper just to poke into it and split it. Fantastic. A manual just splitting of the nucleus there in the anterior chamber. And again, not a terribly dense nucleus, so you should be able to aspirate this down pretty easily. I like the technique here. Beautiful. So let's see what else we got. All right. Faco Pro going in, and now the pieces are there, just yours for the taking. And just emulsify them up a little bit here, a little bit at a time. And those will come out pretty easily. And then the questions now you're going to get to is, all right, nucleus will come out pretty easily. You got that covered. But for cortical cleanup, hmm, got to be very careful in doing the cortex removal in this case, right? Because in this case, you know, you don't want to pull on that anterior capsular flap that you have there because that'll rip right out too. So let's see the technique here. You can do a bimanual or coaxial. So coaxial, you may want to do that one area where the runout was, do that one last. Now, a consequence of bringing the nucleus up like that and having the pupil hold it for you is now the pupil's coming down a little bit. You get a little meiosis here, and that's okay. Your second hand, your, your chopper, and your, your paracinesis can help you kind of get things uh, visualized a little bit better, maybe lift up the iris if you need to. Here's using a cannula or something just to push that little last piece of lens material in. Filling up the bag, that's a good bag fill. I like that. Let's take a look. It looks pretty good still. Pretty good. Let's get that lens in. Here comes the lens. Now, careful putting the lens in the bag. Be very cautious here. You want to just put it in as gently as possible. Not too much manipulation of that bag because that rip that you have, you don't want it to run out. So this is a, a, a lens with the four haptics. Let's put it in the capsular bag. I, in general, for the case of this, would like a just a, a acrylic, hydrophobic acrylic lens with two haptics, two, you know, typical haptics, because that I could keep it really rolled up tight, deliver that whole tightly rolled up lens in the bag, and then just let it slowly open in the bag. I wouldn't have to do any manipulation to kind of position the lens or tuck in haptics, etc. So cleaning out viscoelastic here, good case. Yeah, the patient will do great. Maybe a little bit of cortical material left on the periphery. That'll clean up nicely. Again, I do agree that you want to be very cautious in these eyes and don't take any undue risks. Ooh, tough case. Thank you for watching.